Well, the results are in. And for the fifth year in a row, Finland continues to occupy the top spot as the world's happiest country. As a group, many of those who live in northeastern Europe, like Denmark, Iceland, Switzerland, um, etc., they rank in the top 10. And so, being the happiest people in the world, how do the Finnish people respond when they heard the news? Well, we took a photo of Mika Hakkinen, um, oh, sorry, Kimi Raikkonen, when he heard the news. And you can see how excited he was when he heard the news that the uh, Finnish people were the happiest country in the world. Now, some may suggest that Finland's um, world's happiness, being the world's happiest country, is because they have the highest number of metal bands per capita than any other country in the world. And while in Australia, we have the big smiling Danny Ricardo in Formula One, that does not translate into our happiness as a nation. In 2012, we were number nine in the list and we have subsequently dropped to the lowest ranking that we've ever had of number 12. But today, we discover what we can do to improve our world happiness ranking. Let me pray. Jesus, we recognise that you are a blessing to us. We recognise the good things that you do for us. And Lord, as we spend time looking at what it means for us to be happy, I ask that, Holy Spirit, you would speak to us. That as we open the word that you inspired, that you would encourage us to look at happiness, perhaps in a slightly different way, as we seek to honour you with our lives today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, the World's Happiness Report has been going on for about 10 years and it's conducted by the Gallup World Poll and it measures several key areas that they believe are critical for people's experiences of happiness. They include the GDP per capita of a country, the social support systems that are there, healthy life expectancy, freedom to make life choices, generosity and freedom from corruption. And while governments have, uh, that we elect have some control over the, a number of these factors, the area in which we have the greatest control or agency is in that of generosity, or what we at Northern would call being a blessing. Interestingly, people are consistently trying to prove wrong the saying that money can't buy you happiness. The reality is that once you reach a, th a, a certain threshold of income, a certain level of income, the increase in happiness above that level of income will only move in a very small amount, if at all. According to Harvard, a Harvard Business Review article in September 2020, making lots of money will not inevitably boost your happiness. How you spend, save, and think about money shapes how much joy you get from it. But being a blessing is more than just about money. Though uh, through the eyes of the Gallup World Poll, being a blessing, or as they refer to it, being someone who is generous includes donating money, volunteering, but also helping a stranger. It should come as no surprise that the Gallup World Poll confirms what Christianity always knew, that being a blessing to others is integral to personal happiness. In fact, we discover that Paul wrote about it to new Christians in Galatia. When they were having these competing thoughts about legalism and individuality and individualism, Paul cuts to the chase. And in Galatians 6, 1 to 10, he calls Christians to discover the true happiness that comes from being a blessing to others. <clears throat> so let's have a brief look at Galatians 6 and discover seven fundamental principles 
to being a blessing that you might just find helps you to have a happier life as well in the process. Galatians 6, 1 to 10, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says this, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently... You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens, and in this way you obey the law of Christ. If you think you're too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught, those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired from doing good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever you have the opportunity... We should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. Now, if we tease out Galatians chapter 6 as a faith community, the first thing that we discover is that being a blessing um, precludes us from taking the position that other people's relationship with God is their business and I should just mind my own. In highly individualistic societies, we can react against others speaking into our lives when it comes to our relationship with God. And Australia, scoring second after the USA for individualism, we can push back and say to people, how dare you tell me what to do? How dare you speak into my life about my relationship with God? That's my business, not yours. But Paul calls us to be a blessing to others by showing support for others and their spiritual well-being, including when it comes to sin. Paul writes, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Now, this is not about sticking your nose in other people's business or pointing the finger at people, calling them a sinner. It's about showing loving concern for others. And in love and with gentleness and humility, drawing a person's attention to an area of life that as a Christian they are being let down in. You know, in my teenage years, Kathy Bates was like a sister to me. And she did exactly this for me. I was misbehaving after church one Sunday and she spoke to me. And I knew that Kathy wanted the very best for me. And she challenged me. She said to me that she was disappointed in my behaviour. And it broke my heart to hear that someone that I cared about and I valued their views um, said to me that I I um, I was disappointing them. And I knew that she was right. I'm a better follower of Jesus today because Mary is prepared to call me on areas where I fall short. Mary does this with gentleness and out of love for me. And I know that my wife Mary wants the very best for me. You can allow someone else to be a blessing in your life by explicitly, by saying to them, I give you permission to speak into my life and lovingly challenge me in areas where you might think I am missing the mark. And as scary as it might be, 
you could be such a blessing to someone that you care about by lovingly, humbly challenging them in an area where they might have a blind spot or some area of sin that catches them out. But be careful in your support of others that you don't fall into the same or a similar area of sin yourself. Paul also calls us to be a blessing to others by showing support for uh, their emotional, mental and physical well-being as well. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 we read, share each other's burdens and in this way you obey the law of Christ. If you think you're too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. You're not too important to care. Jesus spoke of the most important commandments, loving God and loving your neighbour as yourself. Beyond any social responsibility, as followers of Jesus, we are called to care for others and to share the burdens of others. Those who donate, volunteer and help a stranger are more likely to be happier than those who don't. In fact, it's been found that even people who struggle to meet their very basic needs exhibit a a feel-good, warm glow when they give to others. We we have to be careful that we don't just care for others out of a desire to feel good about ourselves. We are a blessing when we act responsibly in our care for others by sharing their burdens and seeking to help them in ways that they find helpful, rather than just ways that we think they want. That means we need to listen to them and understand from their perspective what we can do to help. We're also a blessing by doing our best. Galatians 6, 4 and 5 says this, Pay careful attention to your work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Now, some churches might mistakenly think that this is a call for excellence. But Paul is not saying this. But neither is Paul saying that what we do just does not matter. Near enough is not always good enough. I remember talking to a Christian co-worker in a manufacturing company that I worked for and he had this attitude of just doing enough, just doing enough to get by. Um, And he was the first one when it came to knock off time to put down the tools. When it came to uh, smoko or lunch, he'd be the first one to put down the tools and he'd be out the door to get lunch. And then he would be the last to pick them up as well. I chatted to him about his boss and that his boss was actually Jesus and his work was both an act of worship as well as a witness to those around him. He'd never thought of it like that. We don't worship mediocrities. We worship Jesus. And when we worship Jesus, it should show in how we um, pay attention to the things that we are called to do. It should show in our attitudes to those around us. Doing so helps us to be a blessing to our boss, to those that are calling for us to be involved in various areas of life. Galatians 6.5 talks about bearing or carrying our own load, pulling our weight, carrying our burden. And as a church, we believe that we are global citizens in this. And as such, we are not exempt from this. We ought to be a blessing to the world around us as global citizens. That's one of the reasons why we've tried to reduce our carbon footprint and use of water. We don't want others to be carrying our load for us and expect other countries to do the heavy lifting or to pay the consequences for us. Paul then speaks to the church family about their responsibilities that those called to give up mainstream employment um, and how they are called to serve the church. Contrary to misconceptions, everyone, 
every one of us as Christians are called to serve God in full-time ministry. But God does not call everyone to give up other forms of employment to do so. For those who are, then Paul calls for the church family to be a blessing by supporting the ministries of the church and those that are called to give up other forms of employment to serve the church. In Galatians 6, 6, he says, those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Being a blessing in this way provides the opportunity for us to partner in the work of the church. So rather than being a consumer, volunteering and prayerfully and financially supporting the church and the church's mission has you be a partner in this, in the work that Jesus calls us to do. And that's a blessing to the church and those we support. Being a blessing is influenced by to whom we listen. As Paul reminds us in Galatians 6, 7 and 8, if we, are, uh, if we are to be a blessing, we are to be a blessing by listening to the Holy Spirit, not some marketing or social media post. Paul writes, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Being prompted by the Holy Spirit to do, to say, to help somehow, it helps us to move from focusing on what's, what's in it for me to what can I do for others. It's a blessed mindset that we have. And I'm sure many of you have heard to be the change that you want to see in the world. If you live for yourself, then don't complain when others do the same to you. Instead, be a blessing. Be a blessing by listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Promptings of the Holy Spirit to make a difference in the world that God has placed you in as followers of Jesus. There are so many voices out there telling us how we should use the resources that we are given. According to the Association for Psychological Science, it's the, the better a country does socioeconomically, the more individualistic it becomes. And while we gain in some areas, we lose out in others. According to the Charities Aid Foundation, Australia is the, mo the fifth most generous country in the world. Indonesia is the most generous. Yet elsewhere, we are also rated as the second most individualistic country after the USA. According to NPR, a uh, non-for-profit media organisation, the key to understanding this link between individualism and generosity may be that in the World Giving Index measures generosity for strangers. Members of a collectivist culture uh, do very much value generosity and giving, but that's primarily towards family and members of a close-knit group. So they'll care about what's happening right here, but not what's happening over there. It shouldn't be an either or, but rather a both and. We should support and be a blessing to those we consider strangers, those people that are out there, but also be a blessing to those that are immediately around us. And last, Paul gives an example of this as he writes further. We are called to be a blessing by caring for those within the church and those outside of the church family by caring for those locally and also caring for those globally. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. There is a subtle 
but a significant principle that Paul writes about here. There is an inconsistency in helping those in the community while those in the church suffer. But equally, there is an inconsistency if we hoard our resources within the church and disregard the cries of the community or the world in which God has placed us. The challenge of individualism and affluence is that we can pay someone else to be a blessing for us. But God wants us to do what we can to be a blessing and then where we can't to resource others to extend that blessing. As a church family, God is calling us to live life well through the outworking of the transformative power of uh, the good news in our life and in the lives of those around us. And so as a church family, we are committed to being a blessing in our world locally and globally. And as we look at Paul's writings in Galatians 6, 1 to 10, we can be a blessing in our world and become a happier person in the process by showing support uh, for our spiritual well, uh, for people's spiritual well-being, by support, showing support for others and their emotional, mental and physical well-being, by doing our best, by supporting the ministries of the church, by listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and sowing where the Holy Spirit calls us to sow, and by caring for those in and outside of the church family. Let me pray. Jesus, it is a challenging word. Sometimes we can try and prove the world wrong. We can try and prove your teaching wrong by gathering more, by taking more, by by hoarding more. That if we earn more, if we gain more, we'll be a happier person. But once again, Jesus, we recognise that in your word, you speak a challenging word to us. That if we want to truly be happy, then it's by being a blessing to others. That as we who are so blessed by you should also be those who model what it means to be a blessing to the world around us. Holy Spirit, would you continue to move amongst us? Would you continue to prompt, guide and lead us into the areas where you want us to be a blessing for your glory? Amen. Well, it shouldn't come as any surprise that God who has blessed us also encourages us to be a blessing. So as you consider the encouragement for Paul, from Paul in Galatians, What is God saying to you about some of these opportunities to be a blessing? What I encourage you to do is on on those points that you can see on the screen behind me, to maybe write a prayer, a prayer of commitment in an area or in one of those areas, there might be a few, that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about today. As we um, do that, there's going to be some music played. And I encourage you to respond to the things that God's saying to you today. God bless you.